to both the Haggadah and the um, Rabbi and Cantor on, uh, on the screen all at the same time. One of the easy ways to do is once the screen share goes up, at the top of your screen, you will see a green label that says that Temple Beth Shalom is sharing the screen. There's a little arrow on the right side of it that says view options. Once you click on that during the screen share, a drop down menu will come down and all you have to do is select side by side mode. Um, once again, I go to the top, it'll say Temple Beth Shalom is screen is sharing their screen. Go to view options and uh, the drop down menu will have side by side. Um, we will be backing in and out of the screen share, so therefore we can see the rabbi and the cantor and all that they have beautiful, and Joyce is beautifully prepared um, on the table this evening. But um, um, if you wanted to view both at the same time, um, that gives you the ability to do so. Um, without further ado, um, I want to give my own personal hug samaf to everyone, uh, but I'm going to turn it over to the rabbi and the cancer and Joyce to get us started this evening. Okay. Um, after Happy Passover. Uh, can everybody see us and hear us? And I guess I need to move over That's just you. a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. And want to wish everyone a very, very happy Passover as we prepare for a very special Seder. Uh, we had our first service last night with actual congregants as part of the service. It was very exciting. And uh, those of you who were there saw just how animated and wonderful it was to have interaction, right? We, have, we don't have an audience, we have a participatory congregation, and so it was very nice, even if Baruch didn't let me sing anything. And the dog was facing the other way. And the dog, and the, the service dog was facing the other way the entire time, <laughs> showed no real no interest, interest in, in religion, no. and we're trying to work on the service dog. Um, we're going to have slides for the Seder tonight. And so uh, we're ready to start with the Havdalah because it's after Shabbat almost. Please don't look out the window because it is a little bit still light. But where is it dark? It's dark in Alaska, right? Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Baruch. All right. And well, we're going to we can light. We're going to light the Havdalah because candle. Because it's a little different. Uh, as you'll see on the shared screen. Uh, uh, I'm just going to put up page 88, and it has a special short Havdalah for this Seder night of, that was Shabbat. And I've been instructed not to let the wax spill on Joyce's carpet. <laughs> <laughs> well, or on her permanent boyfriend. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> Ben Kodesh, Le Kodesh. 
I'm, I'm really enjoying holding this candle. I can't hold it the whole seder. No. <laughs> All right, this is it. Havdala. This is it. Are you ready? Goodbye, Shabbat. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Well, that's the rabbinic way, huh? To announce the one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> Good. There's wax all over. Oh, good. Just on the on that mat. Oh, yeah. oh, I try to get some on the carpet, but we can't. We can't. Okay. <laughs> all right. There's no seder like our seder. Oh, so I, I, I get, that's true. There's no seder like our seder. There's no seder I know. Everything about it is halakhic. Nothing that the Torah won't allow. Listen how we read the whole Haggadah. It's all in Hebrew, but we know how. There's no Seder like our Seder. We tell a tale that's swell. Moses took the people out into the heat. They baked the matzah while on their feet. Now isn't that a story that just can't be beat? Let's go on with the show. <laughs> But if Moses took the people out into the desert and it was hot there, but it wasn't as hot there as it is here. No, here you just bake it on the sidewalk. Um, we're turning now to page 18. Okay. And we have, uh, we'd like to ask our educator, Andre Ivory, to begin in 18, uh, beginning our Seder. Why do we celebrate Passover? We gather tonight to celebrate the liberation of the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt more than 3,000 years ago. Our ceremony is the Seder, a Hebrew word that means order. We read from the Haggadah, which means the telling. We tell the story of our deliverance from Egypt using symbols whose meaning we explore. These symbols are on our Seder table and on our Seder plate. We turn to the next page. Jewish tradition requires that each of us act as if we had personally gone forth from Egypt. Every generation is encouraged to make the story of the Exodus their own. In accordance with this obligation, each year our Seder combines rituals and prayers developed over the millennial with contemporary readings and new practices for our joyous celebration. By telling the story of freedom on Passover in Hebrew, Pesach, we celebrate our Jewish history. The story of the Exodus, however, is not just a Jewish story. It is a, it is a story that embodies human, humanity's passion for justice and freedom. Tonight, we celebrate the efforts of all people everywhere to free themselves and others from oppression. Our festive celebration is intended to be a source of inspiration and strength to be drawn upon by each of us throughout the year as we strive to enhance our vigilance against injustice. It is our prayer that we may be inspired to take the steps necessary to free ourselves from the forces that limit hope and freedom. Throughout the world, families gather tonight and invite friends and neighbors of all religious beliefs and those who may be alone or unable to make their own Seder to celebrate with them. We know that this year things are still a little bit different, but we are hopeful now that many of us have had the vaccines that we're slowly coming back to the previous situation. Tonight we will learn together, right, Barb? Exactly. Right, Joyce? Yeah, correct. We will discuss the Passover symbols, answer the four questions. Marvin sent me a new set of four questions, which, <laughs> starting with which of the vaccines did you get? <laughs> Sing songs, play games, give thanks, offer blessings, and rewind, remind one another that each of us came forced out of Egypt. We shall also eat a meal worthy of royalty yeah, whoa, yeah. and drink four cups of wine. And thank you for all of the volunteers. Um, 
uh, uh, Steve and Bob and everybody who worked with you to distribute all of the Passover meals that came out of the temple today. Um, we should also eat a meal worthy of royalty and drink four cups of wine, at least four cups mm -hmm. of wine. But if I, Joyce, if I drink four cups of wine, you're going to have to call me an Uber. Oh, and I got the number. Okay. <laughs> Why four cups of wine? According to one legend, we drink four cups of wine because royalty drank three cups of wine mm -hmm. with their meals, and we are to outdo even kings and queens mm -hmm. in our continued quest for freedom. Why do we celebrate Passover? With grateful thanks, we welcome everyone to our Passover Seder. We've got a huge number today, tonight. Tonight, we shall fulfill once again the Torah's instruction to remember the story of the exodus from Egypt all the days of our lives. Whether we have many Passover memories or are experiencing our first Seder tonight, we joyously tell the story of the exodus as one community. Let us welcome each other as it is our first Passover celebration with the traditional words of welcome to the Seder uh, table. Right, is everyone ready? You can unmute if you like for a second and read the five words together. One, two, three. Blessed are you who come. And let us say together to all the women at the Seder to get to, uh, to table. One, two, three. <laughs> Let us say together in Hebrew to all the men at the, slaver t at the Seder table. I haven't had any wine yet, and I'm already slurring my words. All right. Are we ready for the song? <laughs> Hine mato. Hine mato manali. Yevedahim gam yachad. Hine mato manaim. Yevedahim gam yachad. Hine mato. Yevedahim gam yachad. Hine mato. Yevedahim gam yachad. How good it is when we're all sitting together, and even though we're sitting together via Zoom, it's still very, very good. And let us say, Amen. Amen. I think we're up. Joyce, I think we're ready for the we blessing the over the candle. Blessed are you, eternal our God, sovereign of the universe, who sanctifies us with your commandments and has commanded us to kindle the festival lights. Baruch Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzibanu, l'hadikner, l'hadikner, shel yom Thank you, Trice. That was really nice. And... Uh, we're going to now move the candles. Halakhically, we're not supposed to move the candles when you light them, as Joyce pointed out. Yeah. But as far as saying already, we're But not. according to Zoom, uh, Zoom kit, we have to. Right. And that now you can see us more clearly. Um, the lighting of candles in our home symbolize lighting the candles of light, joy, and the knowledge of God's ways. 
We light and bless, and bless the festival candles tonight, marking the joy that Passover brings into our home. That's beautiful. And now we have the blessing over the children. If your children here, if you could wave your hand so we can identify you. How many children do we have with us tonight? Hopefully a lot. Okay, let's see, wave your hands or, or click the little thing. And we bless our sons. Yismacha Elohim Ke'ephraim Menashe. May God bless you with the strength and faithfulness of Ephraim and the wisdom of Menashe and the blessing of the daughter. Yismech Elohim Kesara Rivka Rachel Ukulea. May God bless you with the strength and vision of Sarah, with the wisdom and foresight of Rebecca, with the courage and compassion of Rachel, and with the gentleness and graciousness of Leah. And let us say, Amen. Amen. We now come to Kadesh. So as you know, there's approximately 15 parts of the Seder, including the Passover meal, and Kadesh is one of them and we'll be coming to some of the others. And uh, we've got our wine. Um, it, we have to drink four cups. And so we're on the first cup of wine, aren't we? Are well, we? Well, pretty close. Kadesh, page 30. I'd like to ask Andre to continue. The Kiddush cup that holds the wine is our symbol of joy. The wine poured into the cup is our hope for life's sweetness. Together poured to the brim, the cup reminds us of the fullness of our days. During the Seder, we drink four cups of wine. Each cup symbolizes a different aspect of Passover. With the first cup, we remember God's promise to our ancestors and to every generation. Okay, Barak, we're going to do the first cup of wine, but before we drink it, we have to bless, correct? And in order to you bless, sing. we're going to have you sing the blessing. Well, this is the, the long version, so you have to hold some thirst for a minute. Oh, no. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Borei pari hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Asher bachar banu mikolam, vero mimanu mikolashom, vikidashanu ba mitzvotav, batitain manu adonai aloheinu bahava, moadim le simcha, hagim uzmanim le sason, et yom kav ha matzot hazer, siman heirutenu, ikra kodesh zecher litziat mitzrayim. Ivanu Vaharka, Atanu Kidashta, Miko Hamim, Umoaz, Moaz, the Simcha Uksasam, Inhaltanu, Barukatarunai, Mikadesh Israel, the Hazamanim, and then the Sheikh Yanu together. Baruch Atarunai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu, Vikiyamanu, Vihigiyanu, Malatman, Azeh, Amen. So we have to take the sip of wine. L'chaim, everyone. L'chaim, meaning to life. On this year, as we hopefully are starting to emerge from the scrooge of the pandemic, literally, we can say l'chaim to life. And let us say, Amen. Amen. We learned a lot about plagues this year, didn't Yes, we? right. Now, I have written here that something that you're going to do about take me out to the ball game or take me out to the Seder or take me out oh, to yeah. the, to the um, 
uh, vaccine center. Uh-huh, one of those. It's take me out to the Seder. Oh, okay. Or take me into the Seder. Uh -huh. Take me out to the Seder. Take me out with the crowd. Feed me on matzah and chicken legs. Let's enjoy all those hard boiled eggs. And it's root, root, root for Elijah that he will soon reappear. And let's hope, hope, hope that we'll meet once again next year. Well, let's hope we meet sooner than next year. I invited Babe Ruth to the <laughs> Seder tonight, but he wasn't available. No. And as, as and I, 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 I personally was bringing Elijah, but he got pulled over by the police, as I mentioned earlier, for driving an unauthorized vehicle just because his chariot had a little fire on it. All right, I hope he hadn't had much wine yet already. Now, we have a beautiful Seder plate here that Joyce put together, and I'm just going to show you the different things. Here is the shank bone, which is symbolic of the Passover sacrifice that was done in the temple. And here is the egg, which is symbolic of the holiday sacrifices which were offered in temple as well as the eternity of the soul and the seasons of the year and then we have the karpas which is what we're going to bless in just a second which is parsley and it looks beautiful and here is the salt water that we're going to put the parsley in and here is the karoset the bitter herb which is horseradish the red stuff and what is this white that, stuff? That, you you yeah. like the white. Oh, this is the white horseradish, the bitter herbs. This is what I'm taking. And then finally, there is the um, the karoset, which symbolizes, as I said last night, the fertility uh, of of having uh, sex under the apple trees in order to um, have children. Progeny, yeah. And finally, we have. Not an orange on the Seder plate, but a tangerine. And what is the symbolic difference between a tangerine and an I orange? Have no idea. There's a very profound theological distinction so that Joyce can tell you if you ask her later. Wow. And so that's our Seder plate. And we're moving into the next element of the Seder, which is the karpas. So I'll give mm -hmm. you a little bit of karpas. And Joyce, Whoa. do you want some as well, or? I want a little bit. Okay, thank you. And you can take a little carpas, and then we'll dip it into the salt water, um, uh, symbolizing the bitterness of the tears of slavery. And then we'll turn it over to the cantor, I think, it's right? Not, apparently. It's Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Borei Bari HaAdama. Blessed are you, eternal our God, sovereign of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth. So the blessing here is not Borei Bari HaAids, it's Borei Bari HaAdama, because this grows in... Mm. So and now uh, we're going to do Yachatz, breaking the middle matzah. And oh, this is beautiful. And so you can see here the three matzahs. Now we break the middle matzah in half. The larger piece is called the afikoman. It is our tradition to hide the afikoman. After the meal, the young people of the Seder hunt for it. Hunt for it. Uh, and return it, possibly for a reward. I'm sure for a reward so that the Seder may be completed. The search for the Afikoman reminds us that it's the memory of freedoms that have been lost that inspires each generation to continue the pursuit of liberty, tolerance, and justice. So I'm going to open it up and, and whoa, it's a trick. <laughs> and I'm going to take the middle matzah. Whoa, it's totally a trick. I can't find the middle matzo. Oh, oh, here it is. No, it's wait. It's from Harry Houdini's base-up equipment. <laughs> I can't find the middle matzo, Joyce. 
Can I take the the left? Yeah, you can. I'll take the left side. I hope. Oh, you know what's going to happen. I'm not, yeah. oh. I'm not going to disqualify everything. Okay, there we go. Okay. But here's, I'm going to hide this one. It's not the middle matzah. It's, I won't want it. I don't want to lie. This is the top or the bottom matzah. And it's half of it, but we're going to hide it. And she already hit the middle matzah. Oh, she first. already hit it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we now um, move to page 43, Halachma, which is the, the, the story about this matzah, which is now, now, as you may recall from last night, there is a debate whether this is flat because it represents the, the poor bread that the slaves in Egypt had to eat or whether it's flat because of the rush of the Israelites didn't have time to bake it be before uh, they rushed out. So, and some people said maybe the two interpretations can be combined, uh, but they definitely have a certain thing, a uh, difference. And if you have a shmura matzah, hand-baked round matzah, that's even better. Page yes. 43, it, it's, it's the Mahadran, it's the right way to do it, and it tastes a lot better as well. And <laughs> we're not uh, gonna have you do ads for Yehuda Matzah, I'll tell you that. I'm I'm trying, I'm trying to get I've been trying to get the matzah companies to come to me for years. Right. So I'm going to do that now. Allah <laughs> ma Avatana Beadad Mitzrayim Kol di fin ye te behekul Kol di tsrif ye te vilip sach Ashrata ha-ha-shara Be-ar-adi Yisrael Ashrata ha-ha-de-le Shana ba, l'shana ba, b'nei chorin. Okay, we're going to return the matzah. Now I understand you have a ballad of Mo Matzah to sing for Mo us Mo Matzah, that's I what I want. I do want to point Mo out matzah. that yesterday yeah. I wore a, a very similar type, very but not similar. identical. But tonight Baruch has the, the matzah, the matzah tie, tie. And he has a a matzah yarmulke as well. Um, so I, I'm just dressed in a normal tie and a white yarmulke. Thank you for lending me. You're um, uh, substituting for the red one that yeah. I brought with me, uh, representing the four cups of wine. <laughs> okay. But the ballad of Mo Matzah. I want Mo Matzah. Okay. Come and listen to a story about a man named Mo. His people, they were slaves to the evil Pharaoh. Until one day he was looking at a bush and he heard the voice of God, though he wasn't a lush. The Lord, that is, I am the big G. Next thing you know, Mo's talking to Pharaoh. Mo says, God said, you got to let my people go. But the king says, no, they will always be slaves to me. So God sent down 10 big plagues on Pharaoh's whole country. Blood and frogs, that is, pestilence, special effects. When the firstborns died, Pharaoh sent the Jews away. They ran and ate some matzah on that very happy day. So now we have our Seder to commemorate that feat. We drink some wine and talk a lot. We sing and also eat matzah, that is, more or two, and good food. Y'all come back now, you hear? Wow. Very nice. We now turn to the introduction of four questions. Andre on page 48. And then we have a younger volunteer to sing the four questions beginning on page 49. Well, that younger volunteer turned it over to me. So you guys get to hear my, uh, my scratching voice uh, sing tonight. So uh, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully uh, that, uh, that dog that turned, your back, that turned his back to you last night doesn't start howling. Uh, when I start going. So <laughs> at our Passover Seder, we ask four questions as we inquire, why is this night different from all other nights? The questions ask why there is a change in our, uh, in our everyday routine 
for our pass out over evening meal. By asking and answering these questions, we explore the meaning of Passover for our children and for all those at our Seder table. For those who are unacquainted with the Passover symbols and rituals, and for those who seek a deeper understanding of the story of the Exodus. second part of it is that God did a miracle and with a mighty hand and outstretched arm took us out of Egypt and dropped us into the desert for 40 years. It's not about the food and the wine and all that. No, not apparently not. Mm -hmm. And so we turn to page 55. Uh, I like to ask Andre to start us out with uh, an explanation of the Seder beginning with the differences, and particularly starting with the most prominent of the symbols, the matzah. Why on this night do we eat only matzah? Matzah symbolizes both slavery and freedom. Matzah is our bread of affliction. It is a symbol of our rush to freedom, the food we ate when liberated from Egyptian bondage. When our ancestors rushed to leave Egypt, they did not have time to wait for their bread to leaven. During Passover, we eat matzah to remind us of our enslavement in Egypt and of the divine help we received during the Exodus. Bitter herbs, moror. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you both the, the real stuff and the red stuff. <laughs> So you can choose. It represents the bitterness of slavery. We eat bitter herbs just a few minutes from now. 
so that we will never forget the bitter taste of oppression. But I actually like the taste of it. Of oppression. Of oppression. <laughs> so what can I say? Karpas. Karpas is a symbol of renewed hope and the promise of spring. We dip Karpas in salt water as a reminder that our ancestors viewed the hope of renewal through the tears of slavery. Later in our Seder, we shall combine Maror and Choroset. Maror is dipped or mixed with Choroset to remind us that we withstood the bitterness of slavery because it was sweetened by the hope of freedom. A pillow on our chair is a symbol of freedom. Historically, st slaves sat on hard benches or on the floor when they ate, forced to rush through their meal in order to return to work. For our ancestors, uh, and for the Romans as well, reclining on pillows or couches, eating at leisure, engaging in conversation, were symbols of freedom. Our pillows symbolize our ability to recline as free persons, declaring to the world that we will not be enslaved. Now we turn to the four children. We have the wise child and the, the, the wicked child and the simple one, and the one who's unable to ask questions. We'll begin with Andre. According to tradition, there are four types of sons and daughters. Actually, hold on. Sorry, wrong page. The wise one <laughs> knows how to turn the page when he's reading the wrong one. The wise one asks, what are, what are the rulings, the laws, and the tradition that God has commanded to us? Hachami ma hu omer, ma ha edot vaha hu hukim va mishpatim asher tzivad on ailahinu et fem. Our children are searching for wisdom and knowledge from the Seder experience. It is our obligation to help them gain a deeper understanding of God's teaching through the story of Exodus and strengthen their commitment to the pursuit of freedom, tolerance, and justice. Um, page 63, um, the wicked one, uh, I, that sounds a little harsh, doesn't it? The wicked one, yeah. can we say the belligerent one or the <laughs> stubborn one or the one that needs a little bit more discipline quickly uh, or the wayward child? The wayward child says, what is this service to you? Which is quoting the Torah from the book of Exodus. By saying to you and not to us, our children are distancing themselves from their community. It is our obligation to make the Seder a source of discovery of the spiritual foundation of Judaism to help them strengthen the bonds connected to their family and to their community. Back to you, Andre. The simple one asks, what is this? Tam Mahu Omer, Mazot. Our children are seeking to better understand the story of Exodus and the importance of the Seder. It is our obligation to help make the Seder an inspirational introduction to the study of the Jewish people's struggle for freedom through the generations. Okay. And now we have the, the one who is unable to ask. To our sons and daughters who are unable to inquire or do not know what questions to ask, and a lot of us, even adults, are in that category, we begin. And this is again a quote from the same book of Exodus. You shall explain to your child on that day, it is because of what God did for me when I went free from Egypt. It is our obligation to help our sons and daughters become involved in the joyful experience of the Seder so that they may begin to feel a part of the Passover story of freedom and discover what questions they wish to ask. The one who is wise uh, needs, needs more discipline. 
simple and does not know what questions to ask resides within each of us. By fulfilling our obligation for the Seder, we learn more about ourselves and each other and make the story of Passover our own. Well, here we are on day 70. Vehishe amda, vehishe amda, level de nuvelanu. Vehishe amda, vehishe amda, level de nuvelanu. Shelo el kad bilavad, amad aleinu, level de nu. Shelo el kad bilavad, amad the Passover story of the deliverance and redemption that we now recount has provided a shared sense of experience to the Jewish people for 3,000 years. Retold each year at our Seder, the biblical story continues to sustain and enrich our collective spirit. Page 72, the story of Jacob, Joseph, and Egyptian slavery. The Torah tells us that when harsh Famine engulfed the land of Canaan. Our forefather Jacob and his household went down into Egypt in search of food. Joseph, one of Jacob's sons, was already in Egypt. Joseph had helped Pharaoh eliminate the threat of famine during seven years of plentiful harvest. You remember the dream that he had uh, with the corn stalks and with the cows. He was favored by Pharaoh had written high in the Egyptian court. He'd become, I think, prime minister, and he was able to provide possessions and security to his father, his brothers, and his entire family. Um, the Jacob, Joseph, and their families, at first strangers in the land, came to feel at home in Egypt. After the famine was over in Canaan, and it was possible to return to their homes, they remained trusting that the memory of Joseph and their own contributions would keep them secure in Egypt. Joseph and all, the gener and all that generation died, and the generations of Jacob and Joseph were fruitful and had multiplied. And a new pharaoh rose over Egypt who did not know Joseph or the contributions that he, had, he and his household had made to the Egyptian society over the generation. And Pharaoh said, the people of the children of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest it come to pass that when we are at war, they join themselves unto our enemies and fight against us. Our ancestors were then forcibly enslaved. The Egyptians set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens and to build the Egyptian leaders, royal cities, and monuments. And so Pharaoh commanded the death of, the, of all the sons born to our ancestors enslaved in Egypt. But Shifra and Pua, the midwives present at the birth, refused to obey Pharaoh and did not distinguish between sons and daughters. When one Israelite woman gave birth to a son, she hid him from the Egyptians. After he grew too old to hide, she put him in a basket and placed him among the reeds in the night. His older sister hid nearby to see what would happen to her brother. When Pharaoh's daughter came to, the, to bathe in the river, she found the baby in the basket. The baby's sister offered to find her an Israelite woman to nurse the baby. The woman she brought was the baby's own mother. When he grew older, his mother returned the baby to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him. She named him Moses, meaning, I drew him out of the water. 
and raised him in Pharaoh's court. Moses was adopted by the Egyptian royal family and grew to manhood as a prince of Egypt. You may have seen the Steven Spielberg animated cartoon, A Prince of Egypt. When he was grown, he saw an Egyptian taskmaster beating a Jewish slave. Moses killed the taskmaster and was forced to leave Egypt, fleeing to the land of Midian. At an oasis, Moses came upon the daughters of Jethro, a Midianite priest, as they were drawing water from a well. Moses protected the women from a band of bullying shepherds. After the daughters told their father what happened, he invited Moses to their home and soon offered Tipora, his oldest daughter, to Moses as a wife. God heard the cries of our ancestors in bondage in Egypt. One day while Moses was tending Jethro's flock, God appeared to Moses through a burning bush, a bush that burned but miraculously was not consumed. God commanded Moses to return to Egypt and to tell Pharaoh to free the Israelites from slavery and oppression. On the journey, danger to Moses and his family was averted by the bravery and quick thinking of his wife, Zipporah. Uh -huh. In Egypt, Moses spoke the word of God to Pharaoh, saying, Let my people go. When Pharaoh refused to release our ancestors from slavery, God afflicted the people and land of Egypt with ten plagues, each one worse than the one before. It was only after the tenth plague, the slaying of the firstborn, that Pharaoh yielded and allowed us to begin our departure. After the, his decision, Pharaoh had a change of heart and mobilized his army. As our ancestors approached the shores of the Red Sea seven days after the exodus from Egypt, they saw the Egyptian army pursuing them and were filled with fear. Unless we were, were, unless we were able to cross the sea, Pharaoh, Pharaoh would destroy us. God, however, did not at first part the waters of our passage for our passage to dry land. The Midrash teaches that it was only after one man, Nachshon, Nachshon ben Avinadab, acting with the courage of a free person and ready to take the ultimate risk for freedom, walked into the undivided waters of the Red Sea that God parted the waters. He just jumped into the wave. When the Egyptians pursued us into the sea, God saved us by causing the sea to close in on the Egyptians, drowning them. And God brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arms and with signs and wonders. And God commanded us to observe the Passover each year and to declare God's might and mercy to our children throughout all generations. Through our ancestors were redeemed from slavery and we have rejoiced to see the oppressors overcome. Our joys and triumph are diminished by the suffering of others. Even as God saved us, God taught us not to rejoice in the suffering of other people. As the sea closed over the pursuing Egyptians, God declared, my creatures are drowning and you are singing. We now join together to recite each of the 10 plagues while removing a drop of wine from our cups. With this act, we lessen our joy, symbolically acknowledging the suffering of the Egyptians and envision ourselves casting out every plague that threatens our humanity. We're pouring some more wine and we're ready for the 10 plagues. But before that, we've got a, yeah. uh, a spiritual um, song, which is Go Down Moses. Right, which of course also speaks of uh, another people that were enslaved right in our own country. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. 
oppressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Thus saith the Lord, bold Moses said, let my people go. If not, I'll smite your firstborn dead. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. No more shall they in bondage toil. Let my people go. Let them come out with Egypt's spoil. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. And now we turn to the 10 plagues and we use the finger to, um, to, to pronounce each of the plagues one by one. And here we go. Da'am, Svardaya, Frog, Kini'im, Lice, Aro of Wild Beast, Dever, Light, Shekhin, Boils, Bara'ad, Hail, Arbe, Locus, Koshe, Darkness, Makat bechoro od slaying of the firstborn. After crossing the Red Sea, our ancestors celebrated with song, praising the omnipotence of God. Tonight we recite part of this song of the sea, giving thanks once again to God for our freedom and commemorating. Uh, the splitting of the Red Sea. delicious water and all to remember the wonderful woman Miriam who had done so much for the Jewish people and for the cause of liberation. 
Now we have one of the best known and best beloved songs of the Seder. Dianu means it would have been enough. Never enough. It's never enough. Ilu hotsi hotsi yanu hotsi yanu mi mitzrayim hotsi yanu mi mitzrayim da yenu da da yenu da da yenu da da yenu da yenu da yenu da yenu da da yenu da da yenu da da yenu da yenu da yenu ilu natan natan manu natan manu hava shabat natan manu hava shabat la yenu da da yenu da da yenu da da of our Seder and the story of the Exodus. It is a shared Jewish experience that is historical and contemporary significance to persons of all faiths. As we leave Egypt and carry the events of the Exodus into our daily lives, let us give thanks and offer praises to God for the miracles that we have seen like to ask everybody to lift up their cups of wine. Therefore, we are bound to thank, praise, laud, glorify, extol, honor, bless, exalt, and revere the eternal our God who performed all these miracles for our mothers and fathers and for us. God brought us forth from slavery to freedom, from sorrow to joy, from mourning to festivity and from certitude to redemption. Let us therefore sing a new song to God's, in God's presence. Hallelujah. 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 Vachotzianu me abdut le cherut my agon la simcha me evel a yom tov. Ume afi efe la la orga dol. Umishi bud ligula. Venomar le fanav shiracha da sha. Hallelujah. Now we remember God's promise to our ancestors and to every generation. I will deliver you from their bondage. Um, we drink from the second cup of wine to celebrate the survival of the Jewish people. Remember how enslaved in Egypt, we retained our belief in God. Our faith and hope for the future gave us the will to survive and ultimately the strength to pursue the freedom promised by God. Borei pari hagafen, amen. All right. And now, where's the matzah? Right there. I got some matzah right here, and everybody can raise their matzah. We join together in the bracha. Oh, I'm sorry, Bara. You're That's all right. Pray. You can join together. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Hamotzi Lechem Min Oretz. Amen. Now the Maror. Page 111, you can take a little of the moror and in preparation for eating moror, it is customary to dip the bitter herbs into the sweet haroset. 
but not enough to take away from the taste the bitterness. By doing so, we fulfill the second dipping referred to in the four questions. Since maror is a symbol of bitter enslavement and reclining is a symbol of freedom, we do not recline when we eat maror. Okay, so take a little maror and you can take a little harosit as well and get ready. Go. Page 112. Baruch Atadanai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kichanu Bemitzvotav Betsi Mano Al Achilat Maror. Blessed are you, eternal our God, sovereign in the universe, who sanctified us with your commandments and has commanded us concerning the eating of bitter herbs. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Wow! Wow! Whoa! Wow! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Andre Hillel's sandwich. Oh, my favorite! To carry out the injunction, they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs from the Book of Numbers. Our great sage Hillel um, combined matzah and maror on Passover and ate them together. Tonight, we eat a sandwich of matzah, maror, and haroset to remember that in times of freedom, we must not forget the bitterness of slavery, and in times of oppression, we must keep alive the hope of freedom. So you got to take your, make sure you get enough, make sure that the ratio of, of uh, maror to haroset is even. Don't cheat. Don't oh, it's hard to do, Andre. <laughs> wow. Strong. Are we ready for the song yet, Andre? Go ahead. Just a tad of Harosa. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Um, oh, back in Egypt long ago, the Jews were slaves under Pharaoh. They sweat and toiled and labored through the day. So when we gather pace up night, we do what we think right. Maror, we chew to feel what they went through. Just a tad of roast, it helps the bitter herbs go down. The bitter herbs go down, the bitter herbs go down. Just a tad of roast, it helps the bitter herbs go down in the most disguising way. So after years of slavery, they saw no chance of being free. Their suffering was only life they knew. But baby Moses grew up tall, and he said he'd save them all. He did, and yet we swear we won't forget. A tad of Haros, it helps the bitter herbs go down. The bitter herbs go down. The bitter herbs go down. A tad of Haros, it helps the bitter herbs go down in the most disguising way. While the maror is being passed, we all refill our water glass, preparing for the taste that turns us red. Although maror seems to full of, full of minuses, it sure does clear our sinuses. But what's to do? It's hard to be a Jew. But a tad of roast, it helps the bitter herbs go down. The bitter herbs go down, the bitter herbs go down. Just a tad of roast, it helps the bitter herbs go down. In the most delightful, <laughs> frightful, in a most delightful way. Hey, hey! <laughs> Page 115, Safon, Andre. Afikomen is a Hebrew word based on the Greek word meaning that which comes after the meal, even though we haven't eaten yet. After the meal, children search for the afikomen. If no children are present, everyone may join in the search. Hopefully you won't break anything in trying to search for it. When it is found in return, sometimes for a reward, it should be negotiated, though. Should get a lawyer, make sure that the terms are agreed upon and in writing. The afikomen is distributed and eaten by all present, their witnesses. The Seder then continues. The afikomen is the last food to be eaten so that the taste and experience of the Seder will stay with us until we come together and celebrate again next year. We have uh, another glass of wine, oh my page 118, 
Now we remember God's promise to our ancestors and to every generation. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great acts of judgment. As we drink the third cup of wine, I can feel that Uber coming closer. <laughs> Celebrate the holy bonds between family and friends and our sacred connection to all men, women, and children of every religion, race, and creed. May the goodwill in each of us draw us closer to one another, strengthening the ties between us so we, so we may help each other through hard times, as well as joy, joyously celebrate good times together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Puri Agapen Amen L'chaim Now I wish that I had stopped when they when they pulled Elijah off yes. on the side of the road I'm afraid he may have been detained but it's time to recognize Elijah the prophet. Page 120. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hadiji, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Agiladi, Bimera Beyamenu Yahu. Im Mashiach ben David, Im Mashiach ben David, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hadisbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi. He just texted me. He's on his way in now. a new in a new break. Now they let his chariot go. They let him go. He just had to just extinguish the flame. Okay. We now celebrate the Hallel um, uh, joyfully um, on this holiday, beginning on page one hundred and twenty-one. Um, we read responsively. As a community, we give thanks for the teaching, the story of Passover, which we shall remember all the days of our lives. And for, and the, for symbols the symbols of Passover, of Passover that inspire us to work, to work for freedom, freedom for, for all. all. As a community, we give thanks to God for our deliverance from bondage in Egypt and from those who have sought to destroy us in every age. And for, and for the reminders in this world, God's work, work to create a messianic age must truly be our own. As a community, we give thanks for the love of family and for the gifts of our extended family of friends and neighbors. And, and for, for the experience of this Passover Seder that brings, brings us closer to, to God, God with our families, families and one another. One another. Words of praise, we celebrate God's presence among us now and in the days ahead. Yeah. As we, as we give thanks, thanks for the freedom we enjoy, enjoy the ability to come together, to come together and, to and to celebrate the festival Passover each year. How many people? When wow, we got the fourth cup of wine. Oh now we remember God's promise to our ancestors and to every generation. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. We dedicate the fourth cup of wine to shalom, to peace. May the one who broke Pharaoh's yoke forever shatter all fetters of oppression and hasten the day when swords shall at last be turned into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Amen. Wow, fourth wine. Wow. Tonight, we have given thanks to God by saying a blessing over not one cup of wine, not two, not three, but four cups of wine. 
as we celebrated the sanctity of every life, the survival of the Jewish people, the holiness of our bond to every family member, and the meaning of shalom, peace. We join together. May this Seder provide us with new spirit and energy. As we strive to meet the challenges of sweet sweetness, may all people soon know freedom and peace. We turn now to the benediction on page 120. Uh, I guess it's not there. May God bless everyone and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and may God be gracious to you. May God's presence be within you always, and may you find peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Now, we normally would come to the Shulchan Aruch at this point, but uh, we're going to, to do the after part so that we can say good night and people can then eat at their leisure and not have to rush back. So we, we have a couple of songs at the end which we're gonna sing now. now we're gonna do the it. first one is about the goat, Chad Gad Ya, mm -hmm. and then the second one is Adir Hu, and then we'll conclude with Lishana Haba'a next year in Jerusalem. I hope we can all be together. I know a lot of people would like to put together a congregational trip to Israel, so maybe we'll be able to actually go to Israel next year. Wow. I hadn't heard about this. It's pretty exciting. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. My father bought for two Zuzim. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Then came the cat and chased the kid. My father bought for two Zuzim. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Then came a dog and bit the cat that chased the kid. My father bought for two Zuzim. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Then came a stick and hit the dog that bit the cat that chased the kid. My father bought for two Zuzim. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Then came the fire that burned the stick that hit the dog that bit the cat that chased the kid. My father bought for two Zuzim. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Then came the water that quenched the fire that burned the stick that hit the dog that bit the cat that charmed the kid chased the kid. My father bought for two Zuzim. God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah. Then came the Lord. He brought peace. God, God, yeah. God, God, yeah. All right. Adir who? Adir who? Which is the the main melody that means us for uh, Pesach. Adir who? Adir who? If never to be a car of Bimera, Bimera, we are men who be car of. El bene, el bene, bene ve habe karov. And now, expressing your wish for next year, next year in Jerusalem. The shana haba abe rushalayim. The shana haba abe rushalayim. The shana haba abe rushalayim. The shana. Abba Ah Rushalayim. Hey! Whoa! A very happy Passover to everyone. 
May this year be a much better year than last year. Amen. May we all have health and happiness. May we all be able to go to restaurants again and uh, eat bread at those restaurants, <laughs> not this week, but in the near future. And may we all be able to travel and, and see come our to friends. temple together. And come to temple together. Yes. We started this past Friday and we're going to continue. And may we all get our, our, our shots whichever we we're going to divide the sanctuary into the the Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson and, we and we're, gonna do shots. we're not going to do shots. No, no, I don't know. No, okay. Happy Passover to everyone and a very Chag Sameach to all. Well, we love you. Chag Sameach everyone. Thank you Rabbi and Cantor for leading us this evening. Nice. Thank you, Joyce, for hosting. Hag uh, Sameach to all of you and your families, um, wherever they are around the world. And, and one of the things that brings us together is that we're all Jews around the world celebrating Pesach together starting tonight, hopefully in peace and in comfort. Um, don't forget some of our upcoming programs for uh, Passover doesn't just end with tonight, but we have our small in-person um, telling the story satyrs during the course of this week. Check your uh, bulletin from this past week to check the times and the dates and call the office to register for a specific time. Plus, we have the Yizker service that we are doing Friday morning in person at 10 a.m. Um, so check your bulletin and be sure to sign up so that we can see you during the course of this week. Enjoy your meals. Hug Sameach, everyone. Be well. Thank you, Andre. Hug Sameach. Hug Sameach.